Our first guest tonight is a world wrestling entertainment superstar and 16-time world champion. He's also a talented actor you know from Trainwreck, Blockers, in the Fast and Furious franchise. He stars in Peacemaker, which is streaming on HBO Max January 13th. Let's take a look. A good ride, a good ride. When she said, I don't love you anymore. I gotta thank you for tonight. Please welcome back to the show our friend John Cena. How are you, John? The beliked Seth Meyers, beloved in my book. I'm very well. Thanks. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thanks for the upgrade. I think that, that the difference between that clip and, and the last clip we showed when you came on is maybe the most massive switch of clips. Last time you were jumping through <laughs> windows, and now we have you dancing in your tidy white. It's beautifully done. Is and that choreographed, or is that all John that, Cena? Uh, that's interpretive dance. Um, uh -huh. I didn't think anybody was rolling on that. And now it's, uh, it's for the world to see on HBO Max uh, this, yeah. this Thursday. Yeah, so, so that's out there. It's a it brave show. Very, very authentic, not... very personal, very beautiful. There, it's, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot of peace. No, it's a, I mean, you know, depending on, depending on what you've seen, depending on what you think. Now, you're wearing the costume, John, but we, uh, we do not see the helmet, the iconic helmet, because uh, you lost it last evening. That son of a bitch fell. I lost yeah. in the sucker's bet. We play games all the time, and I always win, and there's no stakes. So I go in pretty much undefeated, uh, and I bet that he had a Frost's tips, and I bet him the Peacemaker helmet. And, uh, yeah, I lost a Peacemaker helmet that I don't own to Jimmy Fallon in a sucker's bet. That son of a bitch. I mean, you think the stakes were high for you. Here I am watching it last night, thinking I can't wait. I get to have the helmet guy on my show. Nothing. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Yeah, and now you just got a guy with blue gloves. Yeah, it's such a letdown. I'm so sorry. This is uh, uh, this is so fun. Uh, Peacemaker was such a fun character to play for you, for me to watch in, in Suicide Squad. And now, right after, we get to see it in its own show. Um, a different kind of superhero, uh, sort of damaged, sort of raunchy, sort of crass, and arrogant, and all things that I think if we actually had superheroes, we would probably see a lot more than, than maybe the superheroes we've been fed over the years. Oh, so a hero is virtue, superhero is super virtue. Peacemaker is a guy who uh, kills for peace and is really right. good at what he does. And he's really, really flawed. And I think that's when you say, like, if we could see all those things in superheroes, it would probably be more authentic. That's because we're all human. Uh, superheroes are all super virtuous. Peacemaker is jealous of all these superheroes. There was an Aquaman clip that went viral that Peacemaker released. Peacemaker's thoughts on Aquaman. Um, and it just goes to show that he's like jealous of real superheroes. And I think that makes for a, an awesome, funny journey. We have a wonderful cast to surround Peacemaker. And it kind of explores the fact that this guy with this set of skills thinks he's a superhero, but his perspective on life may be a little bit upside down. Is there something, it must feel similar at times, uh, the performative nature of what you're doing with Peacemaker compared to your you know, long and illustrious career in WWE. I mean, there is a cinematic universe to, to the WWE. There is the building of heroes and villains. I mean, did you feel that parallel when you entered the superhero world? Uh, kind of, but it was the opposite. So in WWE, the John Cena character is one of virtue, one of hard work, loyalty, respect, never giving up persistence, always, even when your back is against the wall, trying to do the morally right thing. So this one was easy. I would just have to say like, okay, what would I do in WWE? Do the opposite of that and that and add some profanity and that's Peacemaker. Were you, uh, you know, obviously now we've come to uh, not be surprised by uh, the comedic chops you've shown and, and things like train wreck and things like blockers. Were you happy when you first got that chance to do it? Were you pleased with how easy it came to you? Well, so, uh, man, th 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 thank you very much for the flattery. You have to remember in, in those films, I'm, and in any form I do comedy in, I, I want to be able to surround myself with really funny people. And funny people know how to draw the funny out of others, uh, even if it's at their expense, which I, don't, I also don't mind, which, which makes me a nice target for comedy. But I think in all those circumstances, uh, especially starting with Trainwreck, you know, Judd casts amazingly and Amy was so giving uh, and provided such a great environment. I think it's just a, for me, it's been great to surround myself with funny people and allow them to just tee off and then just kind of be present to, to see what's going on. 
you're uh, one of your co-stars is one of our favorite uh, on this show, Danielle Brooks. I, oh, I need to ask. Great. Have you seen Danielle make balloon animals yet? I haven't. What is that process all about? Just, I would just say, ask Danielle to make you a balloon animal and just know that you haven't lived yet. You haven't lived yet. Ah, I, I, with someone with an incredible lust for life, I can't wait to see these <laughs> balloon animals. Uh, I, I learned, I heard, I should say, that you, uh, you had to learn some sword uh, skills for uh, the show. Uh, did you take to the sword? Uh, it took a while to take to the sword. Uh, you see a lot of sword in the Suicide Squad. You pretty much see me dancing with my sword in Peacemaker. Uh, there's <laughs> okay. a lot of weaponry. There's a lot of weaponry mixed with vulgarity in Peacemaker. And you'll probably see my sword more than a sword. I think we have a chainsaw in there somewhere. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of sharp edges. Um, now, this is, a, this is something that I was surprised to hear, but maybe shame on me for being surprised. You're a man who contains multitude, uh, multitudes. Uh, are, is it true that you are also uh, John Cena? Is it a man who's happy to walk into an antique shop? Oh, yeah. I love antiques. Like, man, I really do. Uh, I love going antiquing. I love trying to find out the story behind all these objects. I, I don't necessarily... Um, Although I love finding value and look for bargains, it's more of the story and the object that I find really uh, exciting. And I just, I don't know, there's something about um, an object with pedigree, an object with a story. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe it's the imagination, but yes, I do absolutely love it. You can tell and, you just struck uh, a nerve. I got, all, I got the spirit finger. <laughs> Antique. I've never seen you, I've never seen you like this, John. <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> um, now, I'm not surprised to hear that uh, in your younger days, you were a bouncer. That I think anyone uh, would be able to track that as maybe a good first job for a young John Cena. Now, but will you please tell uh, the story about being next to a, a pizza shop and a, and a terrible mistake they made, uh, not knowing yeah. that John Cena was working next door? So I was also like uh, Swayze and Roadhouse. I was the bouncer that didn't drink. It's much more okay. of a cooler, if you will. Yeah, I, I was more Sam Elliott than Swayze, though. Uh, the pizza the pizza place offered uh, free pizza if you could eat a full pizza, and it was Chicago deep dish style. But I was broke and sober at 2 a.m., <laughs> and I literally just kept eating pizza and eating pizza, and it was like an achievement for them, and they would put a pizza dish on the wall with your name on it. And by the time I had multiple pans on the wall, the guy realized he was getting killed on product and on process because he's losing a pizza pan every time I eat one. And finally, he's just like, <laughs> dude, you don't have to eat the pie. Come over after work for a few slices and we got you. That place was Zeppi's Pizza that eventually closed. Uh, I'm not saying I had anything to do with it, but I probably didn't help their bottom line or their profit and loss statement. That's true. But, it, but at least I think they would, uh, in the way that antiques have a great story, at least they have one to share about a young John somewhere, Cena. Somewhere, about somewhere <laughs> there's two or three Zeppi's pizza trays with John Cena, the date, <laughs> my weight, and I, I did it. Yeah, so those are floating around. Maybe, maybe one of these days in one of these flea markets. Uh, thanks for being here. You know what? Uh, I'm going to look for it at an antique shop is that helmet you lost to Fallon because you know Fallon sold it first thing. Dude, he couldn't, he thought I took it with him when I left the show and I totally gave it to him and he wanted to <laughs> use it as a prop for his next skit. And he's like, if Cena took it, I'm going to be so pissed. And the lady's like, no, here it is. You, it's really yours. And yeah, I would have loved, I would have loved to have seen what happened when Jimmy Fallon was so pissed with John Cena. I would have loved to have seen what that turned out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah that's hey, a, congrats yeah, on the show. Yeah. Uh, I've watched the first one. It's so much fun. You, you were uh, so right about how great the cast is, and I can't wait to see more. Thanks for being here, John. Uh, as always, thank you. John Cena, everybody. Peacemaker is streaming on HBO Max January 13th. We'll be right back.